Hello everyone, Silver Contrail here, and welcome to part 3 of my mod spotlight on Aura Cascade, a mod by Pixelpix. So in the last two episodes, or two spotlights, we've talked about how Aura moves throughout these systems, how nodes work, how pumps work, how to generate power, how to do infusion crafting. In the very last episode we talked about how to use that power with different machines in order to create different products that you'll need for the mid game and the end game and all sorts of things in between. There's a lot of utility in this mod, there's a lot of cool things in here. Uh, in the last section we're going to talk about if you open the Encyclopedia Aura and we check out the beginning page here, we check out the accessories page. We're going to talk about all of these guys and some other things as well. Um, before we get to those we're going to talk a little bit about fairies and a little bit about book storage uh, which are two sort of end game end gamey things uh, that you'll probably want to get working on as you're setting up all of these consumers. Okay, so let's talk about book storage. So, book storage is, it's sort of like, if you're familiar with Applied Energistics, it's a lot like Applied Energistics in a sense. If you have uh, a vanilla bookshelf and you make for yourself a storage book, so this guy right here, and these guys are made um, simply with uh, four books and a black arcane ingot and make a storage book you go over to one of these bookshelves and you right click it and it becomes a storage bookshelf uh, the storage bookshelf contains the storage book if you right click on this guy or shift right click on it it'll give you that storage book um, or you can right click this back in and, and now it has a storage book you can see that the tooltip appears letting you know that you put one in there um, so some of these have storage books, some of them don't, so if I can put this one in here, now it's got a storage book in it. So, what you also need is a bookshelf coordinator, and you can make one of these with uh, seven blue arcane ingots, one bookshelf, and an arcane prism, which we talked about making last time. Uh, once you have the bookshelf coordinator, you can put it down, and when all of your bookshelves are connected, and there needs to be line of sight with some of them, uh, then this will basically power your system and this becomes your your sort of your access port um, but you do need to power it so it needs 81 power per second so we'll just go ahead and turn this on with a little pump system working back here and this will power it so it's a consumer like you'd expect um, and you can open it up in here and you can see that I've got some cobblestone in here there's the storage book in here contains cobblestone if I want to put other things in here uh, which I certainly can I can just kind of fork them in there and there we go and this one's going to contain those. Now, again, if you're familiar with ME systems uh, from Applied Energistics, you will also be familiar with the fact that there are many different types of drives that contain different amounts of items. This mod adds a lot of different drives uh, in its own way uh, that contain different quantities of items and different amounts of those quantities of items. Uh, there's the dense storage book, which holds a lot of one item, or a, a lot of a very few items, um, and then there are other storage books which hold many items, uh, but very little of each of those items. And there's there's a lot of different options here. Uh, there's minerals, there's mod specific, there's mob mod dro drops. Um, yeah, so there's a lot of different options for your storage books. Uh, it's a lot cheaper to make in some cases than an ME system. It's a lot easier to set up. Uh, so there's something there for you. Although, personally, I don't know if I like this GUI setup, but it is pretty interesting. Uh, so yeah, that's basically a book storage in a nutshell. Uh, next up, we're going to talk about fairies. Uh, fairies are, are pretty cool. They're pretty powerful, too. Uh, what you'll need to do this is to make a ring of binding, which you can make uh, doing a vortex infusion. You'll need a block of iron, block of diamond, a block of gold, and a block of redstone. And you'll need 50,000 um, power from aura of these different types. So um, it's a very complicated, or excuse me, a very expensive recipe uh, that will get you to set up for this ring and the ring has 15 slots in it to bobbles items so if you you need to have bobbles on to run this mod in the first place and to access that you can press B or you can go to your inventory um, you know if you've got if you're not in creative mode like I am uh, you can just go to your inventory and then you'll hit this slot uh, and you can pop this guy right into um, your ring slot now the ring doesn't have anything in it because you need to attach fairies to it. And there are a bunch of different fairy charms. The basic one is the 
uh, fairy charm fairy which you make with two bricks and one arcane white gem uh, this by itself doesn't actually have any effects it doesn't really do anything but you'll be using it to make all of the other ones pretty cool right uh, so the different fairies in here so like the fighter fairy will, will fight nearby mobs the debuffer fairy will um, give other mobs debuffs and there are a bunch of different ones here that all have different effects and you can attach all of them to your ring. So if we go over here and we grab, uh, let's say, our trainer fairy. And if we have this ring on, and we just right click, I believe that attaches it. Although I'm in creative, so it's going to look really weird. Oh yeah, and attach two of them. Um, and I, I don't know if they stack. I don't think they do. You can see them kind of flying around me now. Oh, yep, they give you XP, the trainer fairies do. So that's pretty cool. If we hit F5, you can see them kind of flying around there. Very small. Okay, enough of that. Let's grab that out. Alright, so it's finally time to tackle the accessories. And there are a lot of them. <laughs> so we'll get through them in turn. Uh, they do a lot of cool things. Um, we'll check out the crafting recipes for each. Starting with the amulet of the angel's wings. Uh, so this is an amulet item for your baubles. Uh, you can make it with one arcane prism and four pistons. And this does something that's very interesting. It lets you basically jump um, up levels um, by using the arrow keys. So if you press up, you go up to the next place you can stand. You press down, you go down to the next place. Back up, and back down, back up. So if you remember open block teleporters, it it feels a lot like that. Um, so we'll go ahead and get rid of that real quick. Okay. Um, the next one's the Amulet of the Forbidden Fruit. What this does is it gives you different effects uh, if you eat food. So depending on what kind of food you eat, um, it's going to give you uh, something similar to a potion effect. And you can make that with uh, blue, red, green, yellow arcane gems and one apple. Uh, it's another bobble item. And then we have the Angel Steel Sword. We talked about these a little bit last time. They're made with the Angel Steel of any kind, um, any degree, basically. And you can see all the different swords here. Um, and then a hilt color that's an aura crystal of some sort. Um, so if we take these out, we can make a pretty cool sword. Uh, a yellow Angel Steel Sword of the first degree. So this one does a 7 attack damage, and it's got the yellow modifier on it. And what that's going to do, that's going to make it so that striking a mob has a chance to cause them to be struck by lightning. I don't know if it needs to be during a thunderstorm or not. You can see they have the potion effect. I got it to work once. It seems like it's a very low chance. I thought maybe I could get one on camera. Maybe not. I don't think it's going to work. Nope, gave up. Okay. But yeah, there's there's a lot of different effects. They're in the uh, encyclopedia if you look at them. Uh, there's a couple different effects in there that are pretty cool. Uh, next up, the portable black hole. Uh, what this does is while it's in your inventory, uh, it's going to eat up all the cobblestone that you have. So if you grab some cobblestone... I put that in my inventory, it's going to eat it. Oop, there it goes. And that's what it does. It basically just eats cobblestone. So if you're going mining and you got a bunch of junky cobblestone, uh, this will get rid of it for you. The portable red hole. This one's a little bit more dangerous. Uh, so placing this on the ground causes it to create an explosion around it about every five seconds or so. And it is very, very dangerous. Oh, we skipped something. Let me grab that real quick. Uh, the portable black hole uh, is made with cobblestone and a black arcane ingot. This one, <laughs> I miss EE. -E. I do too. Um, the portable red hole is uh, made with arcane uh, red ingots and the arcane red gems. It says don't drop this, but that's what you're supposed to do. So we're going to drop it. Um, this pillar I made using another item that we'll talk about next. Oh boy. Jeez, that is some explosive force. <laughs> I 
Yeah, if you drop this in a regular world, not like a flatland world that I'm living in, uh, it will pretty much destroy everything. You know what? I'm going to pass up, actually. I don't want it to destroy what I have set up over here. Um, it will, it'll go all the way down to bedrock, and it'll make a huge hole for you. So, that's fun. Uh, very dangerous, though. Definitely recommend making a protection amulet. Speaking of the wands, we talked about that earlier. This is the prismatic wand. If you're familiar with um, something like World Edit, uh, that's kind of what it does when you have the axe. Um, you pick one thing, or you pick one side of something, uh, so we do selection, position set, position set. If you hold shift, right click, it switches to the copy mode. You just copy one of the sides, and then you go shift, right click, and you're in paste mode, and then you just paste it. Where'd it go? Oh, we went right there. It's a little weird. It doesn't go... It spawns in relative to your position, not to where you click. So it's a little bit weird. Um, but yeah, right-clicking switches between the selection, copy, and paste modes. Um, you can make this with a recipe that I don't have on there. So let me give me a second. Prismatic wand. Uh, use an arcane prism and two blaze rods. Don't know why that wasn't popping up when I hit R on it. Oh, I know why, because it's in paste mode. It's not going to show me it. There it goes. It's in selection mode, it shows you it. Okay. So you see how important those, those prismic things are. Um, they're used for a lot of things. So the protection amulets uh, come in different colors. They have various different effects. Um, they're all made with string and one of the arcane gems. Um, if you check them out in here... We'll talk about the different things in here. Red grants immunity to fire and lava. Orange grants immunity to explosions. Yellow immunity to projectiles. Partial immunity. Green uh, immunity from fall damage. Blue immunity from drowning. And violet would be immunity to wither and other debuffs. Um, so if we get, say, the, the red amulet. Drop that in real quick. Oop. And we go to our bobbles inventory. We put that there. Uh, we can go jump in lava and be completely untouched by it. Um, even with our game mode set to zero, you can hear we're taking ticks of damage, but we're not actually losing any health. Okay, cool. So, the next one is the rebounding enigma. Um, this one's kind of cool, so what you do is you step on it, and it skyrockets you. Uh, <laughs> I love this thing. It, it's amazing. Um, to make this, you will need one arcane violet ingot and four slime balls. Uh, it is like a super high-powered slime block. It's a lot of fun. Um, you will probably die 90% of the time that you use it, but who cares, right? It's, it's awesome. Um, I just deleted that. Okay, the Ring of the Shattering sto Shattered Stone... Uh, it's a bobbles ring, so you can equip that to your bobbles, just like everything else. Um, what this does is it makes it so that explosions that you are within four blocks of do not destroy valuable blocks, stuff like diamonds, uh, various ores. It'll destroy things like dirt and stone and um, cobblestone, gravel, those sorts of things, but it won't destroy your ores, which is important because, as we know... TNT sometimes does not drop, or explosions in particular do not drop the items that they explode, or that uh, they blow up. So if we set this off, you can see that while the stone is destroyed, oops, uh, the ores are not, because it was in four blocks of the TNT. Pretty cool. Alright, then we got the Sash of the Angel's Heels. This thing is like Boots of the Traveler on crack. It does a lot of step assist. Uh, so we can equip that to our sash spot. Um, it basically gives you one block to three block step assist. So I get regular step assist here. Or you can step assist up to three blocks here. But that's not the only thing it can step assist. If you want to step assist something higher, all you have to do is walk at it. And it will step assist all the way up top. Uh, I actually had, when this was um, built all the way up before we blew it up just now, uh, I step assisted all the way to the top of that. So that's pretty cool. Uh, next we have the three swords. It's a sword of the barbarian. And uh, this one's pretty cool. It does more damage the more times you hit an enemy. So if we get, say, a spawn, let's say, oh, uh, let's spawn another iron golem. 
Um, and we'll just melee this guy. And every time you hit them, you're gonna do 7% more damage. So that that second to last hit actually did quite a bit more damage um, than the other ones, and it, it can stack up to 100 times. So I think that's about 700% more damage on the final hit, which is crazy. Uh, really good against bosses that you're gonna hit a bunch of times, like maybe a wither. Uh, sort of the thief. Uh, what this one does is if you kill a villager with it, uh, it will the villager will drop whatever they were trading. I think there's a percent chance with that as well. Uh, so this guy sells a uh, diamond sword. Let's see if we can get him to drop a diamond sword for us. He did not. Oh, he dropped an emerald. Dropped a pig saddle. So yeah, you can get different drops from these guys. The transmuting sword, this will change certain mobs into other mobs. Um, one of the switches was a cow, which should turn into a mushroom. If we can find a cow egg, there it is. So we can hit him with a sword and it'll turn into a mushroom. It'll take a little bit of damage. Um, you can also turn uh, slimes into magma cubes and I think vice versa. Oh. Yep, vice versa. Okay. And they take about a half heart of damage, it looks like. And then the traveler's bricks. Um, oh, oh, yeah. We're behind again. Sorry about that. Uh, the arcane prisms, or excuse me, the sash of the angel's heels. This is feathers and an arcane prism. The sword, a barbarian, is two diamonds and an arcane prism. This sword is uh, two third degree angel steel and a green arcane gem. And the transmuting sword, oh, which is right here, is two violet ingots and a arcane violet gem. Mm -hmm. This guy is stone bricks and a black ar uh, arcane black ingot and you get one which is a little expensive but they are very 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 good um, these things will accelerate you to basically instant move speed like the, pretty much the moment you step on them <laughs> they are they are pretty intense I think you can walk on them normally but as soon as you sprint or if you hit them with anything faster than a walk speed, like if you if you jump onto it, it carries your momentum through. Oh jeez, I have that step assist on, so it's kicking me off. Okay, so that's the traveler's bricks, and then lastly, there's the mirror of the angel. And this one's pretty simple. If a gas shoots a fireball at you, you can um, yeah, you can block. Ooh, that's pretty cool. You can basically redirect the gas fireball. Uh, which we can do if we can get a ghast in. And I have no idea. Oh, there it is. And we gotta go to easy. Okay. Spawn in a ghast and change my game mode. Ooh, that didn't work. What does this work, anyways? Oh, there we go. It also redirects the fireball directly at the ghast, and it launches it really quickly. You just spam the click, I guess. Okay, cool. Uh, so that's about it, actually. I think I've covered pretty much everything in this mod at this point. Um, again, let me know if you have any questions or anything else you'd like to see. If there's any additions in the future, I'll try to cover them. Uh, this is a pretty popular mod. I think it's going to be, or it's going to become a very popular mod um, as it gets added to more mod packs. It's got a lot of really cool stuff. Um, there's a lot of fun. It's got a new power system. It's pretty neat. Um, I'm having a lot of fun with it. I'd like to play with it more in survival mode, maybe in another a, popular FTB mod pack. Um, play around with uh, some of the interactions with other mods. So, thank you guys for watching, and again, comment with any questions you have. And until next time, then.